Good day. In today's video, we're going to discuss the temporary graduate visa subclass 485, the post study work stream. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the overview. Just before we start, if I could just request that you um, hit the subscribe button, click on the bell icon, please hit the like button and give this, uh, share this video with family and friends. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Um, so that YouTube can recommend this video to as many people as possible. Okay, so let's begin. A quick overview. Uh, usually this visa is granted between two and four years depending on your qualification and that will be, you, you'll see uh, how that works uh, shortly. Cost is Australian $1,730. The processing times are between five to 11 months at the moment. Uh, with this visa you can live, work, and study in Australia temporarily after you've finished your studies, you can bring your immediate family members to stay with you. Okay, must be under the age of 50, have applied for and been granted your first student visa on or after the 5th of November 2011. You must hold an eligible visa at the time of application and also have held a student visa in the last six months uh, before you've applied. Uh, have a recent degree in a CRICOS registered course. So um, if you're a student visa holder, you would know what a CRICOS registered course is. If not, um, please watch the video on the student visa. Um, you must provide evidence of adequate health insurance for all applicants. Uh, provide evidence that you have applied for an AFP check uh, when you apply and evidence of the required level of English with the application. Okay, so that was a quick overview. Let's have a look at a little bit more detail about the visa. Uh, so yes, as mentioned, uh, uh, it's been it, it's granted between two to four years after you finish your study. Travel, work and study in Australia during your stay. Find your own employment while on this visa. So let's have a quick look at how the grant period is determined. For a bachelor's degree, including honours, the visa is granted for two years. Masters by research and masters by coursework. If you've completed that, then your visa 485 will be granted for three years. If you've done masters extended, then your visa will be granted for three years for the 485. And if you've completed a PhD, your 485 visa will be granted for four years. Okay. And for Hong Kong and British National Overseas, a five year 485 visa. The visa starts on the date that visa is granted. Okay. You can stay longer, uh, just read this if you want to stay longer. Usually people either go back to more study or apply for a skilled visa uh, after this visa uh, comes or is nearing completion. Okay, I will do some videos about skilled visas uh, in the future. You can include family, so just read this uh, information. It's similar to the previous video. Um, you can uh, add uh, uh, members of the family unit uh, at the time of application or you can add them after your visa is granted and they can join you later. The cost is different depending on how you apply. So if you uh, all apply together, so the main applicant then pays $1,730 and the, uh, each other family member who joins you does not pay as much. But if um, they join you after the visa is granted, then everyone who comes after will pay $1,730. So it's cheaper if um, they've if you apply all at once in the f initial visa application. But having said that, uh, they can still join you after your visa is granted. You can, sorry, you can expect to pay, of course, uh, additionally to the visa application charge for health checks, police certificates, um, and or biometrics. Okay, uh, for full info, uh, for full, um, you know, in-depth pricing, you can click on this link, the visa pricing estimator link. This visa is exempt, the 405 visa is exempt from the te uh, subsequent temporary application charge. You can apply from, uh, you can be inside Australia, but not in immigration when you apply and when we grant your application. Uh, due to COVID-19, that has been relaxed, but you need to um, click on this link and see if you uh, meet that scenario for the um visa to be granted while you're outside Australia. Subsequent entrants don't need to meet the um, in Australia requirement. They can be in or outside Australia when they apply and when the visa is granted. Processing times, as we mentioned earlier, 25% five months, all the way up to 90% of applications are granted within 11 months. Okay, your ab obligation, you 
you and your family must comply with all visa conditions and Australian laws. Tra uh, you can travel uh, outside Australia and return as many times as you want while the visa is still valid. The time you spend outside Australia does not extend the visa, so that's very important. So if you leave, um, the, the visa pretty much gets wasted the, the time you're outside Australia. And there is no visa labels, the, the, the visa will be digitally linked to your passport. So that was the about this visa tab. Let's have a look at the eligibility tab. And here you must be under the age of 50 when you apply for this, uh, of this visa. Um, have this visa, so you must um, have uh, this stream is only available if you have applied for and we and were granted your first Australian student visa on or after the 5th of November 2011. Um, if you were uh, granted a visa prior to this date, even as a child, on your parents' student visa, then you'll not be eligible to apply for this stream. So that's um, pretty sad, but that's nothing, nothing can be done about that. If you fall into that, then Unfortunately, you can't get the 485 visa. Um, yeah, the um, just like the previous stream, this is for uh, uh, exemptions for being inside Australia. If you are um, the uh, if you were affected by the um, tra COVID nineteen travel restrictions, so there's a concession period. Read that as at your own leisure. Uh, they, we will only we will process your. Uh, visa application if you are the main holder of a current student visa but not a defense or foreign affairs and trade minister student visa you held a student visa within the last six months before your application and you're now holding a bridging visa a or b granted on the basis of a valid visa application for another visa you have held a student visa in the last six months before your application and you now hold a substantive visa and you are outside australia and you hold an eligible student visa uh, and you don't hold a defense or foreign affairs um, or a trade minister visa. So um, this is again because of the COVID concession period. Um, to be eligible for this visa, you must have completed your course in the six months immediately before the day you apply. Okay, so if it's even a day after, uh, more than six months on the date of your completion certificate or, or, or graduation certificate, then uh, you're not going to be uh, eligible to apply. It's going to be an invalid application. So make sure you don't leave it to the last minute. Uh, yeah, and if you've previously held a 485 or a 476 visa, you can't uh, reapply uh, even uh, if you've uh, c uh, completed uh, uh, studies in another field. So once in a lifetime. Okay, have an eligible qualification at a degree level or above. So these are the qualifications, bachelor's degree, honours degree, uh, sorry, bachelor's with honours, master's by coursework, master's extended, master's by research or a doctoral degree. Okay, meet the Australian study requirement. So here you can read this at your own leisure, but basically this was covered in the previous video. So uh, please make, uh, watch the previous video. I don't want to make this video too long like the previous one. The previous video was very in-depth, so um. Uh, most of the things covered here are identical to the previous stream, which is the graduate work stream. Okay, have studied with an Australian education provider. So yes, um, you, you wouldn't have got a student visa if you weren't. So um, you're most likely going to meet that. But again, uh, read this uh, CRICOS information at your own leisure. Have this passport or this level of English. So um, if you are from UK, USA, Canada, New Zealand or Ireland, you do not need to meet the English language requirement. Um, you will uh, need to prove your English proficiency with these uh, English scores from these uh, English uh, providers. So um, just re uh, look at these and read these at your own leisure. Okay, and English level, re uh, English test results from IELTS, TOEFL, PTE, OET, or C1, Cambridge are acceptable for the, the results are acceptable for th the last three years from the date of the English result certificate. Okay, and next we have the health insurance. So again, similar to the last video. So um, read this or, or or watch the last video about health insurance. Basically. Uh, 
basically it's just identical to the previous stream so yeah you can um, just read that or watch the previous video about the health insurance uh, uh, if your health assessment has expired so if you've uh, it's been more than 12 months that you did your last health, last health assessment um, you will need to complete a new one for this visa not all passport holders need to complete it, but basically if you needed to do a health assessment as part of your student visa, then you then you are going to be in the, the country passports that require the health uh, assessment. Meet the character requirements. So uh, as I said in the overview, you need to um, show that while you have been here, uh, that you are not uh, done anything uh, that's uh, not going to meet the character requirements. So you need to uh, show the onshore AFP, Australian Federal Police uh, Police Certificate, um, sign the Australian Value Statement. So that's done as part of the visa application. It won't you won't let you proceed if you haven't done so. You're not, uh, you not you can't have any debt to the Australian government. If you do so, it needs to be paid back before the application can proceed. And this is about having any previous visas cancelled or refused. So read that at your own leisure. So that was the eligibility tab. Okay. And uh, the step-by-step -step tab is now what we're up to. Okay, so uh, this is again similar to the previous stream. So um, we'll go through it quite quickly. Um, make sure you have a valid passport. You don't have any conditions on your visa that prevent you from applying for a further visa onshore. Um, organize your health exam. So you can read that and go into this link. Um, you can... Uh, have your uh, health assessment arranged before you uh, apply uh, and you can read that information. If you need to get help with your application, you can uh, contact a migration agent. There's links uh, there about that. Uh, step two, gather your documents. So, um, you know, your identity documents, passport, uh, uh, national ID, make sure they're all valid. Study documents, your uh, uh, completion letter, which needs to meet this requirement. So read that at your own leisure. English le uh, English test results. Again, you read that and um, you need to meet the minimum standards. So make sure uh, they're still valid. So not older than three years. Okay, health insurance documents. It needs to be uh, provided with the application. So um, make sure you provide that. Your character documents, the AFP check from uh, the Australian Federal Police and uh, just read this as well. You might need further documents, but it's um, not for everyone. So read that at your own leisure, but everyone needs to provide an Australian Federal Police check uh, certificate, which is um, not uh, been issued longer than 12 months ago. So they're valid for 12 months. Okay. Uh, tell us if you're getting help. So if you're using a migration agent or someone else is helping you, you need to provide the form 956 or 956A. I have made a separate video about that form to so watch that um, on this channel. Uh, if you have a partner or family members, this is the information you need to read and provide their information uh, to prove your relationship with them. Uh, your children that are under 18, if they're uh, joining you, uh, dependents over the age of 18, if you have any that are joining you, uh, prepare your documents. So, um, you know, translate, scan, all that stuff. COVID-19 impacted students. So if you are in that situation, this is the tab and this is the information you need to read. You need to go on that uh, link and um, that's step two. Step three, apply for the visa electronically uh, through the EMI account online. Okay. Uh, you, you would have done that most likely for your student visa. If not, just follow the information and instructions. It's not very difficult. Um, after you apply, you will get a bridging visa. You need to update the department if anything changes. Uh, you, uh, you need to, uh, if you need to travel, you need to apply for a bridging visa B. Organize health is, uh, exams. Attach any more information if you're requ uh, requested to do so. Stay lawful. Can add a family under circum certain circumstances. Any mistakes you need to notify. Any help. Uh, uh, attach the relevant forms and tell us if anything else changes and then after that you'll get an outcome for the visa so that's the uh, that's step five and that's the uh, end of this video if you've liked this video please subscribe to the channel give it a thumbs up if you have any questions leave one in the comments and share this with your family and friends have a good day bye bye